You've heard of church sex scandals before, but maybe not quite like the one we'll tell you about tonight. The secrets span three decades in three separate denominations. Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators here with this story now. And Tom, how is this different from everything we've heard about the Catholic Church? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. With the Catholic Church, we're always talking, at least the narrative is, the archdiocese, moving priests from one church to another. This is really the mirror image of that power dynamic. It's pretty interesting. In this case, it's a 60-year-old Lutheran minister who over the years keeps switching denominations, always staying one step ahead of his past. It's also about a small St. Paul church that's kept him as pastor, even as other victims come forward and against the wishes of a local bishop. I googled Don Horner's name just out of curiosity. It's not what he expected to find. When I could see a link to a church in St. Paul. The man who confessed to molesting children, still in a position of trust. Um, there was pictures on the website with him holding a kid and stuff, and I just thought, this is, this is concerning. Reverend Don Horner has been pastor at Eastside Community Lutheran Church in St. Paul for 20 years, presiding over Easter services just a few weeks ago. Eric Forseth wonders how that's possible, given what he says happened to him 36 years ago when he was 15 on a hayride with his church youth group. He was squeezing my private parts and kind of looking really intensely and <laughs> just very focused and, and kind of had this uh, creepy smile is what I would say in Heights height. So you knew this was no accident? It was, this was no accident. He says it happened again a year later during a group sleepover at First Lutheran in White Bear Lake, where Horner was youth pastor and music director. Don was uh, aggressively trying to fondle me. One of the guys next to us said, what are you guys doing over there? And Don kind of tried to joke away, so he'll, Eric doesn't want to play. And now seeing Reverend Horner's name, still a man of God, he decided to call the bishop. Former Bishop Peter Rognes of the St. Paul Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, or the ELCA. Come to find out, Bishop Rognes already knew about Reverend Don Horner. Bishop Rognes said I needed to file a police report, and then it would be actionable. That was a year ago. White Bear Lake Police conducting the investigation and finding three victims. He was more than willing to talk to our investigators. And much to the surprise of the detective, Reverend Horner walked in and made a stunning admission. While he didn't remember Eric, he admitted to abusing another 15-year-old boy, a member of his traveling youth choir, molesting him in the sauna, the church office, at church camp, then weekly, throughout high school, developing into a sexual relationship that continued through college and for a few years after. Horner married the entire time to his wife with three children. But the Ramsey County attorney couldn't prosecute the case because back in the 70s and 80s, the statute of limitations was just three years. Just a really unfortunate situation, and um, we believe we did everything we can to get a charge on, on this individual, and, and again, we are disappointed that uh, it didn't come through. That victim no longer lives in Minnesota, but he told me by phone he believes in all these years no one ever called police until just last year. What's more, he thinks there were other victims as well. He says Horner had a tendency to pick one kid out and shower him with special attention. He says he knows of at least three other potential victims, but they just won't come forward. But come to find out, back in 1992, 23 years ago, that out-of-state victim had told the ELCA about his long-term abuse. At the time, Horner was associate pastor at Cambridge Lutheran and directing a large traveling youth choir. In a press release back then, the ELCA said Horner had acknowledged an inappropriate relationship going back 15 years and noted that Horner had occasionally spoken of himself as a victim of child sex abuse. There may have been a press release, but Horner told the detective no one ever called police. Horner was de-rostered from the ELCA, removed as one of its ministers. But Horner didn't leave the clergy. He simply switched denominations, becoming an ordained minister with the United Church of Christ, the UCC, which was once part of the ELCA. The UCC would eventually de-roster Horner as well because they say he lied about his background. Horner then joined the International Ministerial Fellowship before resigning just a few months ago. Horner's resume also includes work as a real estate agent and a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force Reserves and a social worker conducting chemical assessments at the Ramsey County Jail. 
So I kind of thought it was like a, a miracle to get a job offer while I was incarcerated. That's how Horner met this man in jail. He was an adult doing time for drunk driving. Horner learned he played the piano and on the spot offered the young man a job playing the organ at Eastside Church. He would live right next door to the church too, where Horner would frequently visit. Came into private areas, bathrooms, into my bedroom, sort of unannounced. And soon he was offering back massages. Well, do you want to unbutton your pants, that kind of thing? And I was like, okay, this is, I'm done with that. That's sort of the pinnacle of like, okay, I get it now. He kind of then blamed me and the victim for all of the the problems. Pastor Cheryl Indahar was once Sergeant Indahar, a St. Paul cop for 30 years before becoming an associate pastor at Eastside Lutheran. She too went to Bishop Brogness when she learned about Horner and then gave the Eastside Church Council an ultimatum. At that meeting, I kind of made it clear that if, if they did vote to keep Don, that I wouldn't stay. What did they end up doing? They voted to keep Don. And you left. And, I, and left. I left. Don Horner was no longer a minister with the ELCA, but Eastside was still an ELCA rostered church. In a statement to the Fox 9 investigators, the current bishop, Patricia Lull, says Bishop Brogness met with the Eastside Church Council in 1996, but was led to believe Horner was music director, a lay position the ELCA had no control over. Rognes met with the council again in 2008, 2009, and 2013, each time urging the council to dismiss Horner, even asking to speak directly to the congregation, but was denied. Last June, after it became clear Horner had continued to serve as pastor, the ELCA finally removed Eastside from its list of congregations. Are you still the council deacon at Eastside Community Church? When we tried to contact the church council, our luck wasn't much better. You are. Can I ask you, is, what, bye? She hung up. And Reverend Horner wouldn't talk either. You can't talk about anything right now? Why, why is that, may I ask? He hung up. What's been hard for us to figure out in the reporting of the story is how much the church council knows about the allegations in this police report, much less how much does the congregation know? So we showed up here at East Side as a last resort for Sunday service to see if we too would be welcome. Hi, sir. Are you a member of the church council? You have absolutely nothing, no business here. So you would want to know about Reverend Horner's history. Absolutely. I mean, he admits to it. That's disturbing. You didn't know. This is the first that I've found out. Do you think they should know? They should know. I definitely agree with that. They should know what kind of church they're, what, what type of pastor they have. Why Eastside continues to keep Horner in a position of trust is a mystery. Perhaps it's about more than forgiveness or the secrets we keep even from ourselves. Eric Forsett believes for the congregation, it's a matter of survival. It's hard to find a pastor in these small congregations that are elderly and losing populations. And they stuck with Don Horner because if they lose him, there's no one else to go to. We've tried over the past few weeks to get any comment from East Side or Pastor Horner, but as you saw there, to no avail. One of the things you really pick up in the police report is the suspicion there could be other victims. And to that end, on the Fox 9 app, we have a very, very detailed chronology of Reverend Horner's activities over the last 30 years. We also have statements there and letters from the ELCA and from the congregations. For the Fox 9 investigators, I'm Tom Lydon.